Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. What a blessing. Thank you all for sharing with us this morning in song. I, I was sitting there and just going down through the songs, and listening to the songs, and I was like, man, this guy must have sat down with me this week or something. Um, it, I don't know. It just flows so well with what's my, on my heart this morning. Um, I'm just going to go down through <clears throat> some of the songs that, uh, that they sang. We are just a grain of sand. And I just picked out portions of the song, so I didn't actually get the whole title possibly. We're just a grain of sand. How big is that? Not very big. And yet God knows where we are, knows what we face, knows what we go through, knows every step that we take, every hair that falls off of our head. <clears throat> this world is not my home. Brothers and sisters, we're just passing through. We're just passing through. <clears throat> Well, then he did the introduction, and I was thinking about the fact that you know, he's mentioned about the things back there that they have. My my mind immediately went when he was talking about the lights. I said, "We better buy some coffee, and don't just and don't just take it. He needs to pay for his lights, so make sure you buy some coffee. <clears throat> take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Yeah, we have burdens." Yeah, we have things we face. Yeah, we have difficulties to go through. But we can take them to the Lord and we can leave them there. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. How I long for some days to just go there. Leave behind these earthly things, the struggles and things that we might face. How I long sometimes for the day that we can just go there. <clears throat> we have each other's back. We run together. We walk together. We pick each other up when we need to. And we walk on. Hills of glory. Again, the place that we finally want to rest is on the hills of glory. And then keep on walking. Don't give up. Keep on walking. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. We thank you for ministering to our hearts through these songs this morning. We thank you that you're a great God. You're an awesome God. Thank you for bringing this family here this morning sharing with us in song and just blessing our morning. Pray that you would come and be with us now as we look a little bit into the Word of God. Pray that you would give us courage, that you would give us strength. Pray that everyone here would be blessed, would be encouraged to continue on and fight the good fight of faith. Because someday it will all be finished and we will rest on the hills of glory. We look forward to that day, most of all because you will be there. And we pray that you would give us grace to walk one day at a time, one step at a time, as we continue on this journey. In Jesus' name I pray. <clears throat> you want to turn your Bibles to Hebrews? <clears throat> By the way, I wanted to mention a little bit something, and I'm one of them, but I, uh, not so much about myself. I wanted to mention about the fact that um, the new babies that arrived this week and just thanking God for healthy little babies. And Syl, became a grand Syl and Christine became grandparents three times this week, so I don't know that there's too many people that can say that uh, in one week's time. Actually, in two and a half days, I think it was. So... But praise God for his faithfulness. Um, what a blessing to see little ones. New life. Just the miracle of life. Just the perfectness 
of a baby. And yeah, I, I don't understand how somebody can say there is no God when you look at something that simple, something that perfect, something that beautiful. <clears throat> Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. The title of my message this morning is Run with Patience. And we're going to uh, move through it rather quickly this morning. I don't want to keep us late. There's something that, uh, and I'm going to start with it. And this is where I thought about the baby all of us. And I'm going to start out with a dad joke this morning. And, and Zach loves dad jokes. Um, but he's not here to, to listen to him. He had a, a fresh little baby. so. Uh, but this is one that I've heard already and and. And I, I guess it's a dad joke, but anyhow, how do you eat an elephant? Can anybody tell me how you eat an elephant? You got it. One bite at a time. It's no different than eating a chicken. One bite at a time. <clears throat> Run with patience. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. It doesn't matter the size. It all works the same. You do it one bite at a time. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> I think we'll stop reading there. Wherefore, seeing we are, we are, I'm sorry, I, was, I had written that all down, and I'm just going down through again. Uh, the question that I have this morning is, where it says, um, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You know, our brother mentioned this morning about the world and the things that are going on in the world around us. It's, you know, in a sense, it shouldn't even really be shocking to us because the Bible tells us that in the last days it's going to be that way. It's only going to get worse and worse and the world is going to wax cold and, and people are going to turn away from, from God and are going to turn to idols and turn to other do other things and put their attention in other places. But I want to, uh, this morning, by God's grace, encourage us. I don't want this message to be a message of despair, a message of, of heaviness. I want it to be a message of courage this morning that though we live in these last days, God has us here in 2023. He has us here in this time that we live in for a purpose and for a reason. Amen? And it's not so that we can be discouraged and feel defeated and not so that we can just look at the world and hang our heads and say, oh, how can we go on? How can we find grace? How can we find the ability to fight the good fight of faith and run with patience the race that is set before us? You know, when you look, like the brother said, when you look at the things around us, it, it can get rather discouraging. If that's all that you have to look at, it can get rather depressing, can it not? But God has us in a race that he wants us to run. Now, when you think of a race this morning, I'm not a runner. Um, I, you know, sometimes think maybe I should. It would maybe help me to lose a few pounds. Uh, maybe I could look a little better and all that, but I'm not a runner. Um, but when you think of somebody that's going to go out and he's going to run a race, he doesn't all of a sudden just one day decide that, well, I guess I'm going to enter this race. I guess I'm going to run. No, that's not usually the way it works. Generally, it works, you know, it might be six months ahead of time or it might be eight months or depending on how far he's gone, it could be years. I, I actually looked it up this morning. It takes approximately six to eight weeks of training to get prepared for a 5K run, which is not that far. About what, three and a half miles, something like that? I'm like, you mean I don't have to train six to eight weeks to run three and a half miles? Really? Yeah, I'd probably have to go 12 or 14 uh, in my case. But anyhow, um, you know, it takes approximately six to eight weeks of training to get prepared for a 5K run. 25 minutes to run a 5K. Wow, it takes six to eight weeks, or in my case, 12 to 15 weeks to get prepared to run for 25 minutes or 22 minutes. Wow. <clears throat> 
I would like to look at four ways that God wants us as Christians to run a race. And this message came out of um, a burden on my heart simply in my own personal life. I, I, uh, I feel like I've been going through kind of what you would call a, I don't know, a dry spout or a dry, you know, just kind of a desert. Uh, don't feel and sense God in a close way in my life. Just realizing that I have not lost my sense of my need of God. But, you know, sometimes God takes us through uh, periods in life like that where we just... We, we feel like we have to just walk by faith. And there's not a lot of feeling that comes with it. And it's kind of where I have found myself in the last month, month and a half or so. <clears throat> and therefore, the question, how do I eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. How do I run the race? It's one step at a time. It's taking one step forward. Another one. Another one. Another one. But what happens when I look back? Ways, four ways to run the Christian race well. Number one, run the race well by finding your motivator to run. These verses begin with laying out some of the motivation we have to run our Christian race well. That motivation is the example of those who have run it before us. This verse follows on the heels of the hall of faith. Did you catch that? These verses come exactly after the whole chapter that we go down through the whole list of, uh, of, of the guys of faith, the, the, the guys that have, have won the race, the guys that have fought the battles, the guys that have went through it. That's where this verse comes in at. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, look at all the men and women, look at all the people that have gone on before us that are in the, in the realms of glory, that are on the, on the, uh, uh, enjoying the hills of glory and, and enjoying uh, being with Jesus Christ in a, in a personal way that we cannot. Look at all of them. And it says, we're compassed with that great cloud of witnesses to encourage us, to be with us, to bless us, to, 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 to try and help us, to continue to motivate us. The Hebrew writer describes a whole host of committed believers who have run the race well. They are referred to as a great cloud of witnesses. Picture running a race on a track and the stands on every side being filled with people who are cheering for you. If you want a good example of this, simply go to an Indians game. Uh, Not Indians, what's their names? It's Indians. Yeah, it is Indians. Anyhow. Uh, want to go, go to an Indians games and, and try and figure out how much it makes a difference when the people are, are enthused about them or when the people are not enthused about them. It makes a difference, does it not? That's, what, you know, that's why they put cheerleaders there. Uh, it makes a difference in how well you do. Uh, when, they get, when, they, when they hit that home run or when they do the right thing or they get that out or they do that extra thing, you know, and the people get up and they're, they're waving these flags and carrying on and jumping. People that would sit in church and wouldn't say a word. But they're up there just at the top of their lungs just giving it all they got. And I'm not condemning you for that. But I'm just saying, that's, that's you know, they're there to encourage them. They're there to bless them. And that's exactly what this great cloud of witnesses that Hebrews 11 is talking about. That's what they're doing to us. Brothers and sisters, when we get to a place where we feel like we want to stop, there's the great cloud of witnesses up in heaven that say, don't stop, go on. Go on. Don't quit running. It's worth running the race with patience. Patience. <clears throat> 
Though we can't see it, that's what is going on in the Christian life. We are surrounded by saints who have gone on before. They're there to cheer us on. The power of cheerleaders is an amazing thing. Um, I have not been in a lot of, uh, you know, large races as far as uh, where somebody's running a 5K or whatever they're running. But it's amazing how that they station people at certain places to be there at the right time when they need a fresh boost of courage or they need a drink of water or they need uh, a, a candy bar or something to give them fresh energy. It doesn't just happen, does it? They need encouraged. They need to be there for each other. Find someone in your life that will challenge and encourage you to go deeper with your Heavenly Father. Don't be satisfied with just making it. Don't be satisfied with just making it. <clears throat> Let yourself be stretched. Let yourself be stretched. In fact, uh, this brings to my mind, again, kind of a hilarious situation, but I'll share it for what it's worth. Don't be satisfied with just making it. Once had a customer when I worked down at Playmore, um, had been there for years. The customer had been there for years, and he was a professing Jew, and, and you could really get him going. You could really get him going. Uh, in fact, if you didn't want to spend an hour with him, you'd better not say anything about it. You'd better just leave him do his business and go on. Otherwise, he's going to keep you. But he once, uh, he once told me the story. He said he used to come into the office there, and he said it was a little slice of heaven to be here today. And, uh, and then he would talk about how that, uh, you know, that how that in his mind, when he gets to heaven, he, he, he hopes that his, you know, that he's good enough to get there. That was basically what he's depending upon. He was not a, what I would call a Christian Jew that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and trusted in God for his salvation. But he, he put it to me one day this way. He said, you know, I don't really care if I just make it into heaven. In other words, it's okay if, if God slams the door and it hits me on my behind on the way in. I just so make it. Ah. Nah, nah. That's not what it's all about. God wants us to be all in. All in. In other words, when you, when you run the race, go all in. It's not so much about finishing, maybe, as it is. Go all in. And if you, if you wear out before you get to the end, get somebody. That's the difference between a race on this earth and a race that we are in as God's people. Somebody will come along and will pick you up and will carry you along. You're in it together. You're there to encourage each other. Doesn't mean we don't fall. We don't stumble. We all do. But the point is... Go deeper with your Heavenly Father. Don't be satisfied with just making it in your Christian life. Number two is cast off your sin which does so easily beset you. In order to run a race well, you will want to cast off any extra weights. Lighter means faster. Trying to run the Christian weight, trying to run the Christian race with sin clinging to our lives, it's like trying to run a marathon in a ballroom gown while carrying a, a backpack filled with bricks. How many of us? Or how, Is there anybody here that ever ran a 5K or did any kind of running? Yeah, one, there's one. There's one. Did you get a backpack full of bricks before you went to take with you so that you could make it better? But why is it in our spiritual journey, in our lives as God's people, why is it that we tend to hang on to just those little petty sins? What, and I don't know, you know, some people say you can't call a sin petty and you can call one great or one not so great. But it's those little things that we, we don't really see as sin and yet we know they're not really the best. They're not really what God would want us to do. And yet we just want to hang on to those things because, uh, you know, yeah, I don't really want to, and yet I do. I want to win the race, and yet I, I, I also want to bring my, my backpack full of bricks. I want to carry my load. I think any teacher or any 
instructor that you're uh, going to have that's going to tell you to run a race is going to tell you, uh, first of all, bring all of your baggage and lay it right here. And in this sense, it's at the foot of the cross. In other words, bring all of your bricks, bring all of the baggage that you're carrying with you, those extra things that you're carrying, and just lay them at the, at the foot of the cross. And then sometimes we want to, we, you know, before we go, we want to, uh, you know, no, just let them there. Just let them there and begin running and begin walking. Cast off your load of bricks. Sin is a weight that ties us down and prevents us from serving Jesus to the best of our ability. Number three, run the race with endurance. The writer of Hebrews says that once we find our motivation and cast off our weights, we need to run with endurance the race set before us. Endurance implies that the Christian life is better compared to a marathon than a sprint. It is something that takes work, commitment, and fortitude. It's not that easy, is it? Doesn't matter what sport you're playing, if you you know what you're doing, if you're running, if you're playing a, 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 a ball game or whatever it is. It takes work, it takes effort. Now it's not the work and the effort that's necessarily going to save you. You need to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all. And then out of that commitment to God, allow those works to come out from within you rather than trying to put them off. That's the difference. So many people, we find ourselves, we try and put the works on rather than letting Christ within us bring them out of us. Big difference in how that race is going to end up. Endurance implies that the Christian life is better compared, I read that, is better compared to a marathon than a sprint. It is something that takes work, it takes commitment, and it takes fortitude. And it doesn't always feel good either. In fact, when a runner begins to stretch his muscles and he begins to run, and the next morning he's like, ah, oh, do I really want to do this? Yeah. It takes commitment. It can't be completed without preparation or practice. Otherwise, we will burn out in no time at all. You don't just show up the day of the marathon and expect to finish well. Rather, you start months in advance. So is the Christian life. We must prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. We know, or we we don't know, and yet we do, don't we? Because the Bible tells us, in a sense, what lies ahead. And we must prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. In other words, you know the road that you're running. You know the hills. You know the valleys. You know where you're going to need that extra strength. You know where you're going to need that extra encouragement. So in the Christian life, we must prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. This is what it means to count the cost of following Christ. There's a price to be paid. Following Jesus will mean, will mean trial and tribulations at times. If we are prepared and are, and are expecting them, we can, by His Spirit's power, go on and not give up in the race. Turn to 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Actually, I have it written down. Don't worry about it. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. Don't think it's strange. Now, I'll be honest with you, the last month or whatever, I've, you know, like I told you, sometimes it gets to feeling kind of long, and you kind of begin to feel kind of strange. You know, you want it to, to think it's strange that God is allowing you to go through this time. No, I'm not giving up. No, I'm not in despair. But I'm one of those that can't go too long without feeling God. You know, I, I'm kind of that emotional kind of a guy, if you might say. If I can't cry, and I can't weep before God, that bugs me. That bugs me. 
<clears throat> Don't think it's strange when there's trials and tribulations at times. When there's maybe a rock that gets thrown at you and you kind of stumble over it, you might fall and all of that. God is there even in the midst of our difficult times and walks with us and runs with us. Lastly is run with your eyes on the prize. <clears throat> Finally, we want to consider the most important aspect of running our Christian race well. Keeping our eyes on the prize. Yes, we, yes, we need proper motivation and encouragement to run. We need to rid ourselves of things that would encumber our progress. We need to be prepared for the long haul. But none of this matters if we don't keep our eyes on the prize. In this case, that doesn't mean a trophy. Our finish line is when we get to heaven. Not something we can tangibly see here on earth. We're not to look back on the things that we left behind. Those things, those bricks, that, 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 that backpack full of bricks that we laid at the foot of the cross. We're not to look back on those things and long for them again. We're to leave them there and keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and continue to walk the walk of faith. Or the weight of sins we have cast off. They bear in the dirt and dust. Where they belong. They're buried in the dirt and dust where they belong, covered by the blood of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we are headed to the hills of glory. That's where we're going. We're not just running a 5K. I don't know how long this one's going to be, but for some of us, it can be 100 plus years. You're getting there, Aiden. You're getting closer. For some, it's not that long. But we never know when our race is run and when it's finished. But one thing we do know, our goal and our purpose is to get to the hills of glory. And it's not so that we can just be on the hills of glory. It's so that we can actually see the one that gave his life for, for your redemption. That's why we want to go. That's the ultimate prize, is to see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ not only by faith anymore, but with, not with these natural eyes, but with our new eyes. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, Oh boy, I lost my spot. Not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. If ye then be risen with Christ. How many of you have been risen with Christ? Nothing to be bashful for. We have been risen with Christ. And then he says, well, if you profess then to be risen with Christ, he says, seek those things which are above, not the things that are here on this earth. Because when we focus on the things that are here on this earth, guess what? We get discouraged. We find ourselves floundering around. But when we set our affections on things above and we look to Christ, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You, be you belong above. You belong above in heaven. You're not meant to stay here. You were created, actually, to go to be with Jesus. But it's your choice whether you want to go there or whether you don't go there. But you were created to bring God glory. It says so in the Bible. <clears throat> Running your race well can never entail looking back. Looking back implies our heart and our desires and our loves are still all still back at the starting line. How many of you have ever done that? You run a race and you get about halfway and you decide, ah, I didn't do that first part well. Let me go back and start over. You could. 
My guess is you're going to do worse the second time you try it. <clears throat> not in, and not in the... I'm sorry. Running your race will never entail looking back. Looking back implies our heart and our desires and our loves are all still back at the starting line and not in the kingdom of God. Let us run toward heaven by keeping the eyes of our heart fixed on the one who is already there, the one who has run the race before us, the one who stands victorious in the heavenly places and is waiting to share the victory with us. Let's keep our minds and hearts fixated on Christ who holds the prize at the finish line. And it's Jesus, the prize that we're after. It's not about winning an earthly crown. It's about going to see our maker, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to turn to Philippians chapter 3, <clears throat> in closing. Shouldn't take but five minutes, but I'm going to read this whole chapter. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, Whereof he must trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but Young that I may win who? Say it. That I may win Christ. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may dwell, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Look what he says. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he, ha he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Brothers and sisters, run with patience. And I want to say this in closing. As brothers and sisters together, like I mentioned earlier, one of the big things between um, a race that you might be running a 5K in is you're basically doing it on your own other than those that are there to encourage you. But in our spiritual journey, there's things that we go through that cause us to fall and stumble. There's things that we go through that cause us to stop. And I want to encourage you as brothers and sisters, 
It's in those times that not only God comes and may even carry you, but he probably carries you through your brother coming, lifting you up and taking you along. That's what Christianity is all about. And that's the relationship that God's people need to experience with each other. You don't need to walk by yourself. You don't need to run by yourself. We can run together, and together we can actually make it. In 2023, in 2024, in 2025, as things get more wicked, as things, whatever happens, and our president doesn't give a care. So what? Brothers and sisters, we can actually make it. Amen? We can actually make it. And someday, we can meet together with our Lord Jesus Christ on the hills of glory. That's what it's all about. And in the meantime, bring everybody else along you can. Bring them along. Share Christ with them and bring them along. Brother Enos, I'll turn the time over to you.